Well, it's time for a change of pace today. You may remember the Wiener 1580, which is our all metal digger and it's electrically actuated. I've been looking forward to doing some upgrades on this for a while. And what we've done recently is I've removed the stock linear actuators and I've replaced them with a heavier unit. When you buy the pack, it comes with three sizes. You need the smallest and the largest, and this is the medium size. So this is gonna become a uh, tipper trailer actuator for one of my 3D printed trailers. But these guys have come out, and in their place, I've parked the long one here and the short one on the stick, or the boom. We also have stuck on a an automatic loader for the for the bucket and that connects into this guy here and it's controlled on the remote with the two buttons there We've stuck a driver in. I've replaced the stock gears, the stock uh, rotational assembly with a much heavier duty thing. So now it's really solid. There's almost no movement in it at all. And lastly, of all the circuit boards, I painted conformal coating, which is kind of like lacquer. And it goes on over the PCB. It's non-conductive and it takes about a day to set. And then when it's set, you've got a nice hard lacquer-like coating, which gives it a degree of water resistance. So all of that adds up to a stronger and more capable machine. Now I didn't have instructions for these components, so I had to work it out myself. It honestly wasn't too hard. The biggest issue is that there is some grinding needed. The metal on this model is low quality alloy, so even a cheap grinding disc should have no trouble removing the pieces in the boom and the stick. This is to allow the rectangular prisms of the new servos to pivot. The original items were made with an angle already, so they could pivot freely. Note I also had to drill out the holes in the base for the bigger bearing to fit. This was easy as the existing holes just needed to be enlarged and you don't need to tap new threads as the provided bolts go into the bearing housing itself. The conformal coating is toxic so make sure you do the painting outside. Wear suitable protection and any spills can be cleaned off with acetone, as can the applicator brush. Lastly, I replaced the stock Phillips head screws in the base with hex head bolts. I added grease to lubricate all moving parts as I reassembled everything. Check rctnt.com for a more detailed write-up with more photos of the process, as well as some links to where I got everything. Now the drawbacks, the, draw, the main drawback I found for this automatic attachment accessory is that the original bucket and claw don't work with it. So if I want to go back to having a grabber, I'd need to remove that and uh, stick the original bracket back on. For now, I'm actually quite happy with this. It works really well. The bucket's a little bit less wide. It's about, I think, eight or 10 mils more narrow which means you've got more authority over what the bucket's doing. It, it doesn't disrupt the digger as much, which is a good thing because when you've got a big bucket, it's just, it's more work for it. Now, interestingly, when I was putting this thing together, I noticed that there are little magnets inside each of the, each of the arms. 
And I was wondering what the endpoint system was. It's actually a hall sensor. So there's a magnet inside the metal casing for each, uh, each end of each hinge on the, on the machine. And so when it reaches its full throw, the magnet aligns with a little hall sensor on the inside uh, and, it, and it stops the motors from going further. I was wondering how they did that and they've done that for every single part of the machine. So that's actually really cool. Still really enjoying it. It's still quite a lot of fun. It's still heavy and uh, now it's just more accurate than ever. So thanks for watching, throw me a like and I'll catch you next time on RCTNT.